In the previous segment, we saw the structure of external and middle ear. Now we would take up the third part of the ear, that is the inner ear. Inner ear is a soft whitish structure and it has many parts. And this membranous or soft part is known as membranous labyrinth. And it is placed in the same shaped structure, which is a bony structure, and that is known as bony labyrinth. So, whatever is the shape structure of this membranous labyrinth, it is placed in the same shaped bony socket, which is called bony labyrinth. And if this is the bone part, and here say this is the membranous or the soft part, there is a space which is filled with a fluid which is very similar to cerebrospinal fluid and it is known as perilymphatic fluid. So here there is perilymph or perilymphatic fluid. Now this membranous labyrinth or this inner ear is made up of three parts. The first part is known as vestibule. The second part is made up of semicircular canals, semicircular canals, and the third part is cochlea. And this, sorry, the cochlea, it is in the form of a coiled tube. We will take all these structures one by one. Vestibule is sac-like structure, and there are two sac-like structures. So this is sac-like and in the vestibule are present sensory structures called macula. We will see the detail of this macula also. Semicircular canals, each ear there are three semicircular canals and they also have sensory structures which are known as cristi or crista and cochlea is the part which is responsible for hearing. So out of all these three parts, two are responsible for balancing and equilibrium. These crista and macula, they help in balancing, posture balancing and equilibrium. Whereas cochlea is going to help us or it helps us in hearing. So, when we say our ears are the organs of hearing and equilibrium, these two parts are for equilibrium and cochlea is for hearing. So, let us talk about this vestibule. Vestibule, as we said, there are two sac-like structure. A bigger one, which is called the utriculus and a smaller one, which is called the sacculus. So, these are the two sac-like structures. This is the smaller one. It is known as sacculus. And this is the bigger one, which is called the utriculus. Sacculus and utriculus are interconnected by a small narrow duct. And this duct is actually connecting these two sacs. This duct is known as utriculo saccular duct. From this utriculo saccular duct arises one more narrow duct. This it leads into a sac like structure. This sac like structure is filled with endolymph and that is why this sac like structure is known as sacculus endolymphaticus as it is filled with endolymph. This is also a fluid which is filled inside the uh, inner ear. This duct which actually is connecting this utricular saccular duct to the sac is known as ductus endolymphaticus. 
So, there are two sac-like structures in the vestibule. One is bigger, it is called utriculus. The second one is smaller, it is called sacculus. And in utriculus and sacculus are present the macula. So, these macula, the sensory structures, they are known as macula or let me write it here. Utriculus has macula, utriculi and sacculus has macula, sacculi. These are the sensory structures. We will see the structure of this uh, sensory part a little later. So these are the two sac-like structures. Now, this is vestibule. We are not talking about the macula part yet. We are now coming to the semicircular canals, which are actually arising from the utriculus part. In the, mac in the se semicircular canal, also there is a sensory structure. And in the vestibule also there is a sensory structure. That is macula here and crista here. We will take the structure of macula and crista separately once we understand how these three things are connected. So now attached to the utriculus are three semicircular canals. These three semicircular canals, they are perpendicular, right angles to each other. According to their position, they are termed as superior or anterior posterior or inferior and a lateral one. So we are drawing all these three canals. Each canal opens in the utriculus from its both ends. So let me draw uh, the anterior one first. At one end of the canal there is a swelling which is known as ampulla. So this is the swollen part and this is the superior or the anterior semicircular canal that we are drawing. It is opening at both the ends into the utriculus. This is ampulla, the swollen part. That means each canal is going to open into utriculus through its both ends, but one end is going to have the swelling. So this a semicircular canal is anterior or superior semicircular canal. And this swollen part is the ampulla of this canal. Now let us draw the second one. The second canal which we are drawing here is the posterior or the inferior one. The posterior has its ampulla here and it actually opens along with the anterior canal. So anterior and posterior they have a common opening into the utriculus. This is the posterior or inferior semicircular canal. The common opening, this common small narrow opening of both the canals into the utriculus, this much part, is known as crust commune. So superior and inferior. There are two canals. Each canal is opening into the utriculus but one end is going to have a swollen part that is ampulla and in these ampullae is present this sensory part. So we have drawn the anterior, we have drawn the posterior or inferior. Now let us draw the lateral canal. So lateral canal is going to be like this. It is here. This is the ampulla and it opens like this. So this is how, let me label this also. This is the lateral semicircular canal. So three canals, semicircular canals, because they are C-shaped or loop-like, they open into the utriculus from their both the ends. One end has a swelling, that means Every canal has one swelling. So anterior canal, it's ampulla. Posterior canal, it's ampulla. And lateral canal and it's ampulla. So there are three semicircular canals. And each semicircular canal has one ampulla. In which present is, is the crista. So there are three cristi which are there in these semicircular canals. Now coming to the third part. That is the cochlea part. Now this cochlea part is attached to the sacculus part. Cochlea is a coiled tube. So this is the 
the place where this cochlea is going to be. This is a coiled structure. We will draw the structure of cochlea in detail. But this cochlea is connected to the sacculus with the help of a small duct. Cochlea structure we will draw a little later. And this duct, small duct which connects is known as ductus reunions. Ductus reunions. So all three parts of the inner part of our ear are connected. And we said there are three parts. This middle sac like part that is vestibule, two sacs, bigger utricular, smaller sacculus. Attached to utriculus are three semicircular canal and attached to sacculus is the cochlea that is the coiled tube which has the sensory structures which would help us in hearing. So this is how the connection of all these parts are. Now later on after we understand the details of crista macula and the structure of cochlea we would put this structure with the middle ear and we'll understand how these connections are seen. So now we would take up the structure of crista and macula in the next segment.